Hi everybody, welcome back to another educational video by MedSchool EU. And this is the video you've all been waiting for. This is the first video covering topics in chemistry from the IMAT specifications. And today we're going to talk about the composition of matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is map out um, the composition of matter. So what matter is, uh, is really and what it's made up of and how it's divided into its subsections, um, things like substances, mixtures, elements, compounds, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. So all of these things are all subdivided into something called matter. And we're going to evaluate that um, through first a chart just to map out uh, how things are structured. So first we've got matter at the very top of the chart. And matter is, is basically anything that has mass and volume. Now moving down to um, the next category that's going to be subdivided into substances and mixtures. Now substances are basically matter that has constant composition, so the same composition throughout, whereas mixtures have variable composition. They're made up of uh, maybe two or three uh, different substances combined together. Uh, and we're going to go through more of a comparison, a closer comparison between the two. Now substances will be split up into elements and compounds. We'll again do a, a comparison between the two, but in general elements are substances made up of atoms of the same atomic number and, uh, and, and the compounds are basically going to be substances made up of two or, or more elements combined together. Now mixtures are going to be split up into two different types of mixtures that will be homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So this is a quick layout of what uh, matter is composed of and, and how it's divided into its different components, uh, the different types of matter, so to speak. And we are going to be talking about things like compounds and elements um, and the different types of mixtures on a regular basis. So I would suggest you get familiar with these words. And in today's video, we are gonna go over the definitions of each and their differences. So first of all, let's talk about substance versus mixture. That's the first subdivision of matter. And um, first, let's go through the definitions. And like I previously mentioned, substance is matter with constant composition, whereas a mixture is matter with variable composition. Now, what do we really mean by constant versus variable composition? Well, in terms of substance, where it has a constant composition, all the particles that are inside of this one thing that we're talking about are going to be exactly the same. They're going to have the exact same properties. Whereas a mixture is going to be made up of two or more different substances combined together. And we're going to go over some examples next. Now, in terms of examples of a substance, um, water is a great example. So if you have purified water that's just floating, that's going to be a substance that is going to be universal throughout. So if you take one scoop and then you take another scoop, maybe you know, 10 minutes later after stirring it, you are going to get the same particles everywhere. The composition of it will be exactly the same. Um, same thing with, with things like gases like helium um, or uh, oxygen gas. So if you have a tank of oxygen that is purely 100% oxygen, uh, that is going to be um, a substance, not a mixture, because it doesn't have any other substances combined with it. It's just going to be a pure substance. Now, when we're talking about mixtures, that would be something like sand that's composed of different types of compounds. Um, I mean, sand is, is basically glass, right? Uh, and glass is composed of different types of compounds. Um, if we're talking about soil, uh, soil has plenty of, of different compounds or maybe crude oil or um, maybe an alloy of, of some sort of metal because as you know alloys are basically made up of of a cluster of different types of metals combined uh, together in one uh, solid element you could uh, count your coffee as uh, as a mixture or, or maybe uh, sugar water all of those things are are going to be mixtures because they contain different substances 
two or more different substances together in one sort of element or one container or one um, one place where they're all um, intermingling together so that is a mixture those are some examples of mixtures and these are compounds so take a different t take a look at the differences between the two and uh, make sure that you can recognize what is a substance and what is a mixture now let's talk about elements and compounds I previously mentioned that elements uh, are, are substances that are made up of atoms of the same atomic number and so what we really mean by that is I mean if we're talking about sodium then we're talking about sodium elements so all the elements that are on the periodic table of elements they are they are their own separate things because they have different atomic number meaning they have a different number of, uh, of electrons they have a different number of protons and quite often they have a different number of neutrons um, that will will differ from another element like potassium for example or another element like oxygen uh, these are going to be separate elements uh, and these are examples of that when we're talking about a compound that is a substance because both of these come as substances right elements and compounds are substances that's a subdivision of a substance and they're not mixtures yet they are part of the substance of the one that is that has the same properties however elements are their separate elements that have the same atomic number throughout and compounds are going to be substances that made up of two or more elements that will be chemically combined now some examples of compounds are going to be like uh, carbon dioxide or water or um, HCl your hydrochloric acid sodium hydroxide all of these are going to be compounds because as you can see they involve different elements combined together here we got carbon and oxygen here we got hydrogen and and oxygen and and these will be the compounds involved uh, or the elements involved together to form a compound now if we're you might be wondering if we're talking about something like O2 or Cl2 or F2 are these considered compounds or are they considered elements because they don't really meet the definition of of compounds because you need two different elements for compound but at the same time um, they don't really meet the definition of elements so the answer is they're neither these are going to be considered molecules molecules that will be uh, made up of two atoms of oxygen or a molecule that is made up of two atoms of chlorine so the answer is going to be neither they're going to be molecules they will not be element or compound so learn the differences between the two these are very crucial to understand because you're going to get very very lost when we start talking about actual chemical uh, processes next let's talk about homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures so homogeneous mixtures is um, a mixture made up of particles that are uniformly distributed now what does it really mean uniformly distributed well uh, for example when you have your your cup of water and you're going to be you know adding some salt into into the water and it's pouring some salt the salt is not going to just stay a solid right it's not going to just uh, stay solid right there it's actually going to dissolve after you you stir it and so when you stir it around it's going to dissolve uniformly meaning it's going to dissolve equally in every single part of of the water especially if you mix it long enough and maybe if you heat it up a little bit as well um, if you just let it be and you're going to stir it and and make sure that the uh, compounds of of, uh, of salt and ACL are actually going to be fully dissolved you're gonna achieve a uniformly distributed mixture and so the the best way I like to explain this is that basically what you're going to have is when you take one scoop of that mixture it's going to have and you look at it under the microscope let's say it's going to have the exact same um, concentration of sodium chloride and water as it would if you took a scoop out of it a little bit later or from a different spot so for example if you had a huge pot and you could take a scoop from one end or you could take a scoop from another end then uh, the, the the composition of it would be exactly the same in every single spot that you're going to take a look at 
Now, in terms of heterogeneous mixture, of course, that's the opposite, and that's going to be a not uniformly distributed mixture. So other examples of homogeneous mixtures, just to, just to end this uh, sort of uh, topic of, of homogeneous, um, other examples would include things like air. So our air is that, that is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and a couple of other gases. The, the proportionality of it is going to be uni universal throughout. Whether I, I take some scoop of air from one part of my room to another part of my room is going to be exactly the same. It's going to have the same concentrations of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the other um, types of compounds. Now, if we're talking about um, maybe natural gas or we're talking about blood, blood is a common example that that is typically asked, but blood is going to generally have the same uh, types of compounds and the same distribution throughout um, your, um, your body system. Now, let's uh, have an example of a heterogeneous mixture. I mean, if we are talking about a heterogeneous mixture, the best way to think about it is if we had some oil and water. And as you know, the, the oil is typically going to flow on top of the water because it has a lower density. So this would be the oil and we're going to have our water floating here. As you can see, it is not universally distributed within our pot. Our pot is going to have oil on top and water at the bottom. So if I'm going to take a scoop from here, I am only going to get the oil. But if I take a scoop from the very bottom, I'm going to get some oil and some water right so um, it's not uniformly distributed some parts are going to have more oil and some parts are going to have more water and some parts are going to have generally equal so that is kind of uh, the best example we could show uh, to differentiate the two uh, now another example if you add like sand to your coffee or or sand to water, for example. I mean, the sand is just gonna sink and it'll be at the bottom of the water. It's not going to dissolve. It's not going to uniformly distribute. It's just going to be at the very bottom. So if I take a scoop at the top, well, I'm just gonna get water. If I take a scoop at, from the bottom, I'm gonna grab a little bit of sand. So it's going to differ throughout. Whereas something like here, like blood, air, or, or salt water solution, well, that's going to be mixed uniformly. So this concludes our first lecture for today. In the next one, we are going to talk about the ideal gas law.